The entrance to Paul Harbour is from the east, via Paul Bay and the English Channel. The harbour is extremely shallow and even today is dredged to enable the large ships to come into port. Brownsea Island is synonymous for its association with the Scout Movement. Historically, Brownsea Castle was known as Branksea Castle, originally a device fort. It was one of a series of artillery fortifications constructed by Henry VIII between 1545 and 1547 to protect the south coast from the threat of French attack. From the 16th century, Paul traded primarily with Newfoundland, a large Canadian island. The salt cod trade meant that the town prospered for several centuries. The outstanding legacy of the trade includes some warehouses and the mansions of merchants who made their money from cod and cod liver oil. Many smugglers were trafficking illicit items from the shores of Paul. The king of smugglers was Isaac Gulliver. He came from a working class background, but ascended to a church warden and achieved wealth and respectability. He owned a fleet of ships and properties. Gulliver famously faked his own death when excise men came looking for him at his home. His body was interred at Wimborne Mint. The RNLI is synonymous with Paul and the headquarters is situated within the town. Sir William Hillary, with assistance from his supporters, is acknowledged with establishing the National Institution for the Preservation of Life from Shipwreck in 1824. Sir William was horrified to witness the destruction of dozens of ships. The organisation was renamed the Royal National Lifeboat Institution in 1854. Jesse Carter, opened an architectural ceramics factory called Carter & Co on Paul's East Quay in 1873. Despite having been known as Paul Pottery for many years, it was not until 1963 that the company name was officially changed. The First World War interrupted the work of the pottery however, and following Owen's death in 1919, new leadership was required. The ornamental side of the business was continued by Owen's nephew, Cyril Carter. He joined forces with artists and craftsmen such as Harold Stabler and John Adams to form Carter Stabler Adams in 1921. Work by Stabler can be seen in the Victoria and Albert Museum. The pottery restarted production, but not in Paul, although a pottery studio and shop still exists close to the quay. Paul was credited as being the third largest embarkation point for D-Day landings of Operation Overlord. At St James's Church, a US Coast Guard ensign is buried and there is a plaque positioned on the quayside given by the United States Coast Guard. It commemorates the cutter's departure for the Normandy invasion and expresses appreciation for the kindness of the people of Paul. The town has a busy commercial port where Sunseeker International builds luxurious boats and is a major employer for the town. Today, Paul is a vibrant tourist resort. Visitors come far and wide to view its large natural harbour and blue flag beaches.